Good morning, and happy Father's Day to one and all. We begin our service of worship with announcements, and so first things first, on the edges of the pews, tucked underneath are our, now I'm not sure what they're called. In my old church, they used to be called friendship pads. Friendship pads. Friendship pads. So um, I was reminded that we need to have those filled out if you can take a moment and write your name in so that we can have an accurate reflection of who is here, who is visiting, people are coming and going in these months, so it'd be nice to have a record of our gathering here this morning. A few more announcements. Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. It is not too late for parents for you to sign your children up. Um, and if you know of someone who may be interested, please let Jill know. Uh, she is uh, attending Nexus, but she will be, we will be gathering afterwards, so if you need to contact her, please do so. We all still need some snacks. If you have some good, healthy snacks you'd wish to share, well, those would be more than welcome. Speaking of snacks, the Voyagers are having their picnic. Uh, it is this Tuesday, June 21st, the solstice, the summer solstice, and it is Nia, help me, Elliot, how do I say this? Nia Tawanta? Nia, oh, Nia Tuana. And there are directions on a blue sheet out on the kiosk in the narthex, and there, are, there is also a sign-up sheet for things you'd like to bring. And it basically it says, go left. So when you go here, go left. So go left, young man, go left, and you will find the place. Uh, and all are welcome. Uh, Creation Care is having their first in-person meeting a week from Monday, so if you have been part of that in any way, uh, you are more than welcome to hear about plans, what, what we, they've accomplished and what their plans are going forward. All are welcome to that. And speaking of Creation Care, there were a die-hard six people who weeded in that 90 degree heat. Now, um, they have called themselves now the Wednesday weeders. They discovered many beautiful things, um, new per perennials that they had that nobody knew were there. They've discovered lots of things. Now, this Wednesday is supposed to be 90 degrees again. So perhaps it'll be a Wednesday thing, but if you would like to, at 6.30 on Wednesdays, for an hour only, come for the fellowship, come to do some wonderful work and see the beauty of our church grounds. Uh, we also have uh, an announcement about the service on Friday for Mike Eldridge. That will be on the, at 11 o'clock with visitation for an hour beforehand here. There is also village uh, visitation at uh, Reynolds Jonkoff on, on Thursday evening from five to seven. Uh, so our prayers and our thoughts and our sympathy and our love, of course, goes to Cindy, Rebecca, Adrian, and Eliana, and Kristen, and Anthony, all of his family and all of his friends who knew and loved him so well. Jordan will be leading that service. I will be assisting, and so please come and help us celebrate and remember this wonderful person. Uh, other announcements this morning that you'd care to share? Yes, go ahead. The bus. Oh, the bus, the bus, thank you. Um, you are aware that uh, for many months, um, Art, or not Art, I'm sorry, Marv uh, Olson was funding the bus to, and that we made an announcement last week, it went out that the bus schedule would be changing to an every other week. Thanks to an anonymous donor, that bus will be coming every week from now on. So our thanks and praise to that person who wishes to remain anonymous. And so that is a great thing for those wishing to come to our services. Any other announcements? Then let us be gathered together to worship God. Good morning. 
Please join me in the call to worship followed by the prayer of invocation. God has laid the foundation of the earth. Let us worship the God who gave us life. Let us come to God's presence with open hearts. Loving God, as a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully employs his own, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Fill us too with your spirit that we may be filled with the courage and with love. Amen. Friends, we are called to live as the Lord requires, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Let us join together in our prayer of confession together. Let us pray. We confess to you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves and our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts. 
Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering and all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Restore us, O God, and bring us once more into the community of faithfulness and hope. Let us continue in silent prayer. Amen. Friends, hear this assurance. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. We are forgiven. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The scripture lesson today is Psalm 42, and you can find it in the Old Testament on page 400. So please follow along if you would like. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food, day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went through with the throng that led them to the procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and from Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk around mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with the directly wounded in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. The word of the Lord. Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrimage. 
pilgrim journey. Yes, I want Jesus to walk with me. Through all my trials, he's walked with me. Through all my trials, he's walked with me. When it looked like I wouldn't make it, through all my trials, he's walked with me. Hey, but when I'm happy, he's walking with me. When I'm happy, he's walking with me. When my soul's filled with all goodness, when I'm happy, he's walking with me. Thank you, Jesus, for walking with me. Thank you, Jesus, for walking with me. You've been there for my whole lifetime. Thank you, Jesus, for walking with me. And all God's people Amen. said, Amen. Thank you for that father-daughter combination. I'd like to invite all who are young and young at heart to join me down front. Yes. Christine is young. Yes! The young at heart are coming. Let's sit around the table. Wonderful. Thank you. Hey, Kathy. Good morning. Good morning. So, I just happen to have a little knapsack here. My knapsack goes everywhere with me. And I want to talk to you about the invitation to rest today. So, I was, my fiance Stan was here visiting and we went on a picnic. And so this was a great, so some things I might take to rest are, for me it always includes food. I'm gonna take a fork, keep hydrated. Oh, my Bible. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I didn't take that on the picnic. Shh, don't tell anyone. And, oh, I like to take comfort when I rest. A friend made this for me, and the soft side is really soft, it's very pretty. So I have a nice pillow, maybe a candle, if I'm, you know, let me see what it smell. What does it smell like? No. Yeah, it's nice. It's supposed to be chocolate or cocoa, too. I don't know, it makes me hungry. Yeah, I yeah, smell too good. And, and snacks. What would rest be without snacks? Please help yourselves. Really, do you want, you not want a grape? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Snacks are ever See what happens if you're young at heart? You get snacks. The other thing that I want to, so there's a verse that you just heard, um, read, and it says, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night God's song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. So I want to ask you, what do you do to rest? What's your favorite way to rest? Read. Read? Okay, yeah, read. What else? Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Oh, I love looking. I love watching people do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> so. How, what other ways do you rest? Doing something with paper. You're an artist with paper, right? You do origami or? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. How are you? Go for a walk with my dog. Go for a walk with the dog. Absolutely. 
So this verse invites us to remember that God is with us in all things. Now, I know that you are all busy people. I know that you are all busy people and that we travel and work and do wonderful things with our families. But an invitation, especially in summer, we're coming up to the summer month, is to rest, right? And that is as much an essential piece of our life as anything else, right? Rest isn't something we do when we have nothing else to do. Can I get an amen? Right? Rest isn't something that we do when, we have, when we're too exhausted to do anything else. Right? Rest is something that we do because God calls us to do it. Do you remember what happened on the seventh day of creation? God rested, yes. So one of the things that we are going to encourage each other in this summer is to rest. So I don't know if you all have a pillow, but I would encourage you, when you get, every time, these are reminders, right? So I like reminders for to rest. So every time this week you see a pillow or a candle or a snack or a fork or water or maybe even your Bible, you would take with me a good deep breath and, and allow God to rest in you. So can we take a deep breath together? And exhale. Can everybody do that? Inhale. And exhale. And then you've almost got it one more time. Inhale. And exhale. I, I feel more rested already. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for giving us rest. Thank you for giving us all the ways in which you remind us to take our rest in you. And thank you for your love, which keeps us in your care always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all for coming down with me. And now our work begins. The reading this morning is from Luke's account, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there was a, on the hillside a large herd of swine feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man for from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed 
and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of new opportunity, in faith we know our unmet promises of yesterday, and today, by your Holy Spirit and the willingness of our hands and feet, become a new reality right now and tomorrow. So open our minds to your word. Let it take root in our hearts, and then let us blossom even more into your people and into your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On a steeply sloping hillside by Lake Galilee is a stone foundation about a third of the way up a hill. And it is the foundation of an ancient Byzantine church. It's only a bit of rubble in a rough rectangle about 30 feet square. And to get there, you start from the shore road along Lake Galilee and then walk a stony path upward, upward this steep hill to this ruin. There are a few benches, a stone pillar, and a small marker. It is quiet and green with a view over the water. It is the site of the Gerasene healing. Nothing is there now but quiet, a few birds, some peace. But that was not always so. This point in Luke's narrative, Luke is showing us Jesus' healing and teaching ministry. And until this point of this story, there have been healings where people have rejoiced and praised God. But this story, Luke begins to add in some things and the language that Luke uses in this story point to not only this story being part of Jesus's narrative, but part of a much larger narrative. Luke's gospel was probably written in 80 AD or so. And so it was well after the death of Jesus when it was finally codified into much the same form as we find it today. But in those years since Jesus' death, much had happened. And so Luke's language reflects the history, the story within the story. For example, Luke uses a verb where elsewhere that he employs of armies meeting in battle. It's the verb where the demon seizes the man and talks about how the demon would throw him down. That's a verb used elsewhere when guards were, were rounding up Christians and bringing them to trial. The words that Luke uses to bind this man in the story hand and foot chains, shackles for binding and gardening, are the same ones that Luke uses in the account of Acts when the disciples are imprisoned. The word legion in Luke's account that the man gives as the name of, his, of himself, for we are many, has a literal meaning as well. It is a unit of Roman soldiers, approximately 6,000. 
the occupying army. So this healing story is a story within a larger story, a narrative within a narrative, because that very region is the site of a horrifying historical event that the hearers and readers of this text would have known about. Josephus, during the last later part of the 60s, late 60s common era, Toward the end of the Jewish revolt, a Roman general, Vespasian, had sent soldiers to retake Gerasa, that area. They killed those Romans, that legion, killed a thousand young men, imprisoned their families, burned the city, and then attacked villages throughout the whole Decapolis. Many of those buried in those garrison tombs would have been slaughtered by the Roman legions. The story takes on a larger significance. One of the emblems of that legion, the Legio Tenth Fratensis, which was used on banners and on everyday objects, was a boar. And so in this story, when the demons beg to be sent into the pigs, it has also another meaning. It is Gentile territory, therefore no Jews would keep pigs. So we already know that we are an occupied land in foreign territory and in home country as well. A story within a story within a story. The story is full of hints of this larger narrative. It's not told, but it is clearly implied. There are few witnesses but the elements that point to a larger narrative are all there. Today marks 157th anniversary of another quiet and green place in the early morning when federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas. Lee, General Lee had surrendered at Appomattox early in the spring. But that news had not quite reached across the United States. And even if it had, there were still fighting. People who refused to believe that that surrender was true or that it held any sway over them at all. And so federal troops finally arrived in Galveston on June 19th, 1865, to announce that the Emancipation Proclamation, which had been signed two years earlier on January 1st, was now in effect with the end of the Civil War. It took another couple of months for all of the 250,000 Texans still enslaved to be set free. There are not all of the enslavers let those people go until the end of the harvest season, holding them still a few more months. Slavery was finally at an end and would be formally abolished in the country with the adoption of the 13th Amendment in 1865 in December. But for this day, the reaction was one of joy and response, of picnics and celebrations. Just two years ago, the Board of Trustees of the Presbyterian Church USA, its foundation, voted to make Juneteenth an official holiday and holy day of the remembrance. They voted on this in November 2020. And so they issued the statement, the Presbyterian Foundation is giving sustained intentional focus on our strategic priority of diversity, equity, and inclusion in who we are as a board and as a staff, cultivating a culture of education of conscientization in and proficiency in dynamics of historical, institutional, and systemic racism. Juneteenth is a sacred day of reckoning for the church, and we dare say for our nation, as it brings to attention the delay of more than two and a half years for official word to reach enslaved people in Texas the tragedy of that gap in time of justice delayed and justice denied calls forth our collective wills that we as Christians and as a people 
can never rest until the fullness of racial equality and racial equity is realized. Today, June 19th. So a country within a country, a story within a story. So I'm wondering about this text, particularly on this day, what does it have to say to us about our own enslavement or the others that are kept enslaved, besieged by demons that many others have been able to avoid? Matt Skinner is a professor of New Testament, and he says, nobody wants the transformation of this man except for him. And even he says, go away, I beg you not to torment me to Jesus. The disciples aren't there. There are very few witnesses, maybe the swine herds far off. But in this green and beautiful country of Gerasa, it is quite empty except for this imprisoned and tormented man. Skinner says, because this town had a deal. They had a system worked out. We chain him up and that keeps us safe. Maybe it keeps him safe in their logic and that he should no longer be chained up or tried to control. We tried to control the things that scare us out of sight, out of mind. And his torment, this man, was multiplied by a society that does not know what to do with him. Joy Moore says this of her own work. Can the story be told to lean in and allow us to judge our own practices? As the one who is practicing the control and trying to keep others in their place, this is about my desire to take care of them, and which is a desire to keep myself safe and then being frightened by what I can't control. Maybe we are fearful of what we don't know or we don't understand, whether that is the demon possession or the miraculous transformation. Reality is just a half step away. Maybe I'm not the one who is being freed, but the one who is keeping someone chained. That's a hard <clears throat> thought to ponder. What happens in the story, which drew my attention to it and what continues to draw me to this story, is the reaction of the country of the Gerasenes. When the people came to see what happened and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them. The word hemmed in by fear, when he says they were afraid, is hemmed in. It is surrounded and chained and shackled. The story within the story is that not only the man who has been in chains, but the people around him, around him as well. They recoil in fear. They beg Jesus to go away. Maybe it means that we prefer to stick with the demons that we know rather than embrace the freedoms we don't. Maybe it means the shackles and chains that bind so many of God's children are the instruments of our own cruel making the weapons we wield to manage our own fears, so says Debbie Thomas. <clears throat> Maybe it means we settle for tolerance instead of challenging ourselves to love. Maybe it means the gospel doesn't always bring peace. It also brings upheaval, messing with our moral categories, economic comforts, and social structures in ways we find offensive. Because this is about freedom and about all of our stories as they are stories connected to and within each other's stories. 
On Friday, a group of us went to the Peter Doherty House on the Mission Peninsula. It was a beautiful day. We had a beautiful guide and a wonderful time learning about the historic aspects of that place. This visit has arisen out of the place series that we did on the Wednesday Night Connection, looking at our relationships with the indigenous communities that were here long before us, about 13,000 years. And so, one of the questions that we wish to ask of ourselves is where is the story within the story here? Doherty, a Presbyterian and a faithful man, often swam upstream against the common mores of his day that called Indians savages. He was friends, he learned language. He shared, there were people living in his home and in that community with whom he shared ministry, and yet he was part of a larger narrative which sometimes does not always get told that he too was affected by decisions that were beyond his control. And so what is our responsibility as those who have benefited from a system that was beyond our control, but is not beyond our responsibility. Where do we go from here? There is a larger narrative for our stories as Presbyterians, as Northern Michiganders, of people in relationship with those who were here before us and still are here. One of the things that happens in our lectionary group on Wednesdays is that we try to sum up what we are going to preach. One of the summaries of this whole passage, it says, I think we're really comfortable in this disease of systemic racism, and when it starts to leave us one by one, we are scared. Amen. <laughs> that may ring true, it may not, because the people in Gerasa we're really only afraid when he got well. What does that say? If somebody is healed, does that mean we're all sicker than we knew? On this day of sacred reckoning, I think our task is to spread the news. The only ones who shared that news first were the pig keepers who witnessed the whole scene and run to share. When they, wait, when they return with people from both the city and the countryside, the liberated man is sitting calmly at Jesus' feet. The people do not celebrate the good news, that overwhelming fear, the word Seneco used in the surrounding of armen, armies and the men guarding people. Because this is about freedom. It's the freedom of Jesus to set us free and to set the whole country of the Gerasenes free of their fear. Not just one person from the demons that torment him, but the whole countryside, Gentile though it is, of their fear too. So when we read this story about freedom that comes in an unexpected way, we look at the country within the country. We look at our narrative of the country within the country, look at the story within the story, and we ask ourselves how many people in our country are still haunted by a traumatic past and tortured by memories? How many live unsheltered, inadequately clothed? How many are imprisoned? How many are regarded as barely human? What does empire still hem us in? with today. Jones says, Jesus comes to challenge and cast out every power that prevents us from living fully and freely as human beings created in God's image. Jesus claims sovereignty not just over our souls but over our lives here on earth. May we, we resist that news finding deliverance from legion too frightening, too demanding, too costly. But those whom Jesus has healed and freed know that his liberating love is indeed good news. 
Debbie Thomas was writing about this story in her reflection on a webzine, and she talked about her own response as an African American, as a black woman, and she says, I have to look at what I name in my own past and who I am as imprisonment and freedom. And then she ends, the story ends with Jesus commissioning the healed man to stay where he is and serve as the first missionary to his townspeople, the same townspeople who feared, shunned, trapped, and shackled him for years. I have to admit, this detail makes me laugh. Isn't this just like Jesus? To choose the very people we consider the most unholy, the most unredeemable, the most repulsive and unworthy, and commission them to teach us the gospel? That is God all over. So on this day, June 19th, Juneteenth, a few weeks before our celebration as a nation on July 4th, May we continue to look at the narratives that are part of a larger narrative and find ourselves as people within a larger story because Jesus comes to set us free from all of it, from our past, from the chains that bind, from the systems which we did not create but nevertheless must work to undo. Maybe our prayer can be somewhat akin to what the man calls out to Jesus. What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Maybe we go from there to ask for healing. And then maybe we go from there to tell the good news in every green and lovely place, in every country, in every quiet moment where there is a history within a history, everywhere we go. May it be so. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Good, good morning to you. I had a birthday uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, can't remember how old I was, so any of you remember how old I was? No, you don't. Um, 97. I was 97. 
Well, I woke up and found out that there were three things that happened on my 97th birthday. Uh, the th first thing was that uh, I was experiencing memory loss. <laughs> and the second thing was, I, I, I don't remember <laughs> what the second thing was. So, you know, I, I did what some of you do. Uh, I, I wrote a note. Now I can't find the note. So what am I here for? You know what I'm here for? A couple of jokes. Oh, I'm supposed to talk about uh, jazz jokes and Jesus. And oh, there's the note right there. So listen, everything you need to know about jazz jokes and Jesus is, is right here in this yellow sheet. And it's, it's worth your reading about and it's worth your coming to participate in uh, beginning in August. Let me see, what is that date? It, no, July, July 13, memory. July 13 that uh, it begins. Uh, but, th but there are a couple things that I'd like to point out. Uh, first of all, it's, it's a, a great spiritual occasion. It's a great fun occasion. And there are a couple of us there that are going to be calling holy yokes. We're going to be telling holy yokes. Me and her. We're going to be telling holy yokes. So if you want to hear about holy yokes, come and hear about the holy yokes. Another important thing to emphasize is that there is a contributor who has contributed $5,000, a matching fund, each week if we match it. Can you imagine that? What that means? We could come up with $50,000 at the end of the five weeks if we match it each week. And there are four wonderful causes lifted here, listed here in the bulletin. And we can do that because we know that we'll be joined by a lot of other folk. But in times past, sometimes there have been more folk from other churches than from our church. So you all come. You have a great time. And please bring a friend within you. Oh, I remembered what I was going to say. Thank you. And Art will be leading that service on that event on July 13th and also closing it out uh, in the last one in August. Uh, so take notes, everybody, for all the bad jokes. So did you hear about the skunk who came to church? He had to sit in his own pew. <laughs> I have more. <laughs> Let us be gathered together in prayer. What are you grateful for this morning? What are you wanting to lift up to God in prayer? Yes, Barbara. Yes, fathers who have served their country. also ask for your prayers for Maggie. Tomorrow she goes to an intervention neurological radiologist. Did I get that right? Yeah, great. Um, yes, Kathy. Visits from friends from downstate. Amen. Fathers who sang lullabies. And no longer with us. Yes. Yes. Elliot. I'm mindful of Tracy Tully, one of our missionaries in Brooklyn, to which I have Thank you. Yes. 
part of the money uh, that is left over while well, there's money being raised for with Jazz Jokes and Jesus with that matching donor, but o over and above that, there will be money going to Ukraine as well. So not only those four, those four organizations, but to the people of Ukraine as well. Um, yes. Grateful for being here. Amen. We're grateful too. The Lord be with you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss somebody? Wave big. Still alive. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So glad that you're here. The Lord be with us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious and holy God, we are here and so grateful to be here, to be alive in spite of the news we received. And so we lift up our members and friends and those we love, those who are here, <clears throat> who are here throughout illnesses, through cancer, through treatment, through grief, through unimaginable loss. And in our gratitude, Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you for those who nourished and nurtured us, for fathers in particular this day, for those who served their country who sang us lullabies for the fathers who are no longer with us, for the fathers we are grateful who are here. We pray for those who are estranged with their fathers for the mourning of children being apart from the fathers that they love. We pray, Lord, for your guiding hand for those who will be new fathers, in particular for Jordan, and for others who await with such hope and expectancy the arrival of their children. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather this day for friends from downstate, we pray that our prayers would join with your great grace in surrounding Maggie as she goes for her appointment. We pray that you would surround Tracy with your grace and with your care. We pray for those who are planning the Jazz Jokes and Jesus events, that you would be with joke hearers and joke tellers, with musicians, with those who bake and bring cookies, for the musicians and for those generous donors who allow us to give and have that giving be multiplied in such marvelous ways. We thank you for the donor who allows the bus to run every week. We thank you that you will transport us safely and give us traveling mercies where we go we pray for those who are far from us, from the people we do not know in Russia and Ukraine. We ask your blessing and your care and your truth and your justice to be made manifest in that nation and that the stories that are told there will be ones of kindness, of compassion. We ask you, Lord, for your love, for your safety, 
and for your courage that we may be able to listen to the larger stories of our nation and our friends, that we might learn again how we may be in this place and in this time working for the equity and the equality of all your people. And may we celebrate along with all of those who remember this day as a day of freedom and of peace. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to give our gifts, know that your gifts are blessed, as are you. us pray. Lord, your presence fills this place and fills each of us. And so we dedicate our gifts to you. We dedicate our lives to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
anywhere, anytime. May the God of peace go with you now and always. In Jesus' name, amen.